Good morning, everybody. Lauren's cooking breakfast back there. And I'm gonna start taking Lauren's advice. Yesterday I started to like, really try to get the kitchen done. And I hadn't really looked at the kitchen cabinet for above the refrigerator for a while now. So I like got everything set up, got the panels ready. I was gonna like assemble this thing first and put it up. And then I realized that this is a 33 inch fridge and they gave me a 36 inch upper. No go. Obviously that's not gonna work. So I had to call them. They're gonna rectify that situation and they're just gonna basically send me a 33 inch at no cost. So while I wait on that, that's gonna be like not till next week. I'm gonna finish up just like kick plate, baseboard, um, this. We've been definitely losing some heat um, just from into the basement and stuff. Uh, some cool air coming up and down there. So I'm gonna block that in, get this thing trimmed out, rocked up there. And that should be it. What do you think? It's gonna be great. I think it's gonna be great too. All right, let's get to it. I still actually have to paint this door, but at least I can spackle that in before like the end of the day with some free time. I won't waste you guys time with that, but um, for right now, this is trimmed out. And I'm gonna get to doing baseboard now because they're still working on our other vacant side and stuff like this, this gapping on this shared wall, we've got a lot of cold air like pouring through there. One thing when you're putting shoe in, remember that you don't want to shoot it into the floor because if your floor has any play in it, you're going to cause squeaking. Exhibit A, our bathroom upstairs. I have to kind of pry it off the floor a little bit because it's, I actually obviously couldn't nail it into the tub. I should have just siliconed or glued it down, but I didn't. I nailed it and now our floor squeaks. So make sure you shoot it into the baseboard, not into the floor. We bought this little entry table over there, which I've been on the hunt for the perfect entry table. We went through a few different kinds, found it, then found this mirror. That's why I gotta put baseboard down over there. Yeah. There's no baseboard right there, and she got this cool table. Oh, it looks good. I and I gotta trim that door out. Oh my God, I'm falling behind. Whoa. I was waiting for you, and it's cracked. Yeah, I don't think. Until Bodie jumps on it. Ooh, no, it looks good. Oh, snap. I love it. Dude, that looks so good. Oh, I love it. All right, stop what you're doing and hang this. <laughs> What's funny is I do have, I have two air ducts running right there. So <laughs> there is a stud between them. I'm just gonna have to figure out where it is. I love it. Yeah, this does look really good. I can't wait to like, I don't want you guys, don't look at it guys. Don't look at it people. Don't look at it yet. We're gonna do that big reveal later. Right now, back to baseboard, let's go. I need you to run to the store for me. That's the last of my two inch nails. Usually you have like an ample supply. I, di I did, which is why I never re-upped on them. But that's it, that's all I got. All right, well. Inch and a half is just not going to cut it. I have three boxes of inch and a half. Hang my mirror then. Oh boy, okay. All right, sounds good. So like in a perfect world, I think I would have gotten the mirror where it like comes down, it's flat on the bottom so that there's less space here. Really? But what, what if you put like something No, I'm gonna. Table, like... I'm gonna do like a tall thing here. Yeah and then we'll, we'll situate it. We'll and I think filled. once there's trim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it just has to be filled out a little. All right, Lauren just ran out to get some nails. I gotta switch gears because I'm at a standstill. I got all that base cut, but I can't tack it down until she gets back. 
So I'm gonna work on trimming out this closet. Uh, sheet rocker actually rocked up over top of my door jam here. So I gotta cut this back um, so I can put an extension on it so that I can put my trim up. So now the reason why we have to do this, obviously we're at the right height here. But the problem is, is that when you open your door here and you were to look at it from the inside, you're gonna see sheetrock there. Like you want a nice clean pine wood edge um, behind, your, behind your trim. So I gotta pull some screws and then get these measurements for the extension. So I got these extension jams cut out, a little square, and you're just pulling the measurement from the top. You're gonna write it down, do it from the bottom, write it down, get your length, cut your thing to length, rip it down to those two points. Um, essentially, this is what you come up with. And you're just gonna tack it. So when you look at it from this side, you can see this is nice and flush with that sheetrock. Right? Totally. Good morning, everyone. Oh my gosh, it's so early. <laughs> In the interest of full disclosure, because we've been honest with you guys so far, on Monday, I caught the COVID. We're both vaccinated and we thought, yeah, that's great. We're all safe and good, but no, you're not. You're never safe. I've got it now. I'm starting to feel better, but like this week was so weird. Like I would, I'd obviously I can't be around anybody. So I'm stuck in the house. So I'm like, Ooh, perfect chance to like get some stuff done. Cause I didn't feel too terrible. Um, but you know, for like five to 10 minutes, I'd be like, yeah, let's go. 10 minutes later, I'm like on the couch, completely dead. So it's been a long road to just do some like baseboard, but I left you yesterday. I had cut these extension jams and I got that trim up for this closet. And Lauren ran and got me some nails so now I can finish this baseboard. But what are we focusing on today? I do not have COVID somehow. Yeah, so we've been kind of staying away from each other. Luckily, we set up that like third floor TV room. How you feeling? Freezing. Really? Yeah. What are you watching? Good, good call. So that my parents could be like in one TV room, Lauren and I could be in another, but obviously my parents are away. They're not here right now. Uh, and they're staying away now that I'm positive. And now Lauren gets the VIP first floor TV room. It's been nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So I just like kind of like lost my sense of taste and smell yesterday, which I didn't think you were supposed to really do with if this is Omicron. You might not have Omicron. You might have like the, the original, the yeah. OG vid. You might have the OG vid. So I kind of want to like, do we have any like really cheap vodka around? Yes. I'm going to pop a shot of vodka, I think, and see. How about this? Do we have tequila? If what if we it. do a vodka tequila beer taste test or something? <laughs> oh. Just a little okay. bit. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Wait, that's a good idea. Okay. Good. All right. Stand by. We're going to get this set up. Okay. So we are going to do three things. We're going to do this. We're going to do... I was thinking of doing this, but it's obviously going to have um, like a different texture. So I feel like he's going to... Oh. We'll do this. And then we're gonna do this. All right, we got three shot glasses. We're gonna do a little Martha's Vineyard action. We're gonna do a little red light district action. And we're gonna do a little Barcelona action. Okay, now some of them do obviously have a different color, Kai, so you can't look either. Okay, come over. Don't look at the glasses. Put your blindfold on. There are three shots in front of you. Oh, God. There's one right here, one right here, and one right here. Okay. Okay. You can go in any order. I'm gonna do this one first. Okay. All right, guys. Here's to getting drunk and playing with power tools. Nothing. Shut up, really? I guess there's like an underlying like hint of like 
maple syrup, maybe. Okay. Like the tiniest, tiniest bit. Am I allowed to smell? Sure. Oh yeah, because it's taste and smell, right? <laughs> Zero. There's <laughs> not. <yet. laughs> that could be water. <laughs> that could literally be water. <laughs> That was water, right? That was water. <laughs> you can put that in your. That was water. Your submission. All right, I'm saying that was water. Like Wait. that had a sweetness. Like Take your guess. Okay, I'm gonna say that this one was water. This one was. Do we have sweetener? Like I would say that this was like water with agave syrup. But <laughs> I don't think you would put agave syrup in water. Like a slight sweetener. Um, and this was like a little maple syrupy. So I would say that this was the tequila only because I would say rum, but I don't think we have rum. Maple syrupy, water, s sugary water, and water. <laughs> 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 but I'll say tequila. Um, I know you like vodka, so maybe vodka, and then I'm gonna say water. Yeah. That's what it was? Yeah. <laughs> this was sugar water. Straight sugar water. That's insane. All right, let's go work with power tools. They were not full shots. You guys saw it was like the they little teeniest, shots. tiniest bit, so. We would normally not operate heavy machinery. Of course we would. Under, and while intoxicated. Of course we would. No, we would not. All right, we're getting started on the crown today. So I am kind of just getting everything prepped. Um, I've got basically all my measurements and all my cuts done, but I'll just kind of like bring you guys up to speed on what I did so far. So <clears throat> these cabinets are, I think they call them like full overlay cabinets. So at the top, when this cabinet closes, there's no meat here for you to nail a standard piece of crown where other cabinets that the doors are set inside this face piece actually extends higher and it gives you material up here to nail your crown to so the type of crown that i have if you can imagine that this actually is my crown so i have like my 45 and my 45 here this piece right here is a little extra piece of material that i'm going to actually screw up and into the issue that I have is that the cabinet has a little gapping up here between the finish and the top of the cabinet. So it actually drops down. So when this piece of crown goes up and goes to sit, there's nothing for the bottom of this to sit on. What you got to do is, I'll find a piece I didn't nail in yet, is just put some packing. So I just took my measurement, I think it's, a, it's like a half inch. Um, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's, it's just under three quarters. So I actually had to rip this down a little bit. Um, but you just pop it up and onto the top so that you can't see it. Your crown will sit nice and flat up there and you'll be able to screw up from underneath to pull that crown down tight. If you guys haven't done crown for cabinets before, this is only like my maybe third time, I think. First time ever doing it where like I'm doing it solo with nobody quarterbacking the job. So, all right, that's, that can't happen. All right, gotta take Bodie's toys away. So this isn't gonna be like a how-to. Um, there's a million videos out there you can look up to see how to crown cabinetry. Um, I'll just kind of walk you through just a couple little things that, that I'll point out and um, just things that I had to like look up um, while I was doing this. Starting off, every one of your outside corners, those, those 45s, they're gonna be 45 degree cuts. Those inside at the corner cabinet right there are 22 and a half. We'll take it downstairs real quick. I did measure and cut all these already, but we'll just show you real quick. If you haven't done it yet, how you basically set your cut up for cutting any sort of crown, whether it be for cabinets or for your wall. So now any cutting that you're doing of any of the mitered corners of crown is always cut upside down. So my first measurement from that cabinet from the wall out was 12 inches. And then it makes a right turn and it goes down like five feet. 
measuring out my 12 inches. This is the end of my cabinet at the bottom of this miter. I'm gonna mark that and then when it goes onto the fence, it's going flat on the bottom, flat on the back. Now, um, I do have a jig, it's just not here. It's over in my garage, which is buried in my parents' stuff. But um, look up on just YouTube, like how to set up a uh, crown jig. And all you're gonna do is basically put together two pieces of like ply and uh, you'll cut your miter and that'll assure that it's, it's sitting at a nice 45 degree angle. After I measured out my 12 and marked it at the bottom, remember this is the bottom, not this, this. Set it, mark it, cut it on that 45. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other corner. And then what you end up with essentially is coming out from the wall and then beginning down my like six foot you'll have a nice mitered corner. Um, the 22 and a half is for that corner cabinet and it's an inside cut. So like whenever I'm trying to lay it out and I have screwed up cuts and backwards and cut them in the wrong direction, um, once I get to a spot where I know I'm gonna have to make a cut, I will visualize it the way that I'm, uh, that a way that it has to be cut and just make a little mark in that direction so that you know when you flip that thing upside down now, you're now cutting in the correct direction. So now this blocking that I'm putting in to pack out the top a little bit is, obviously you can't come down from the top and you gotta come up from up underneath. You gotta be able to tack it in from up underneath. So if you just try to hold that in place and tack it, it's gonna jump a little bit and then you're gonna see it's sticking up a little bit up here and you, you can't have that because your crown remember is sitting on top of it now. So you don't, you can't have that. You just can't have that. So clamp it down and into place and then tack it up from underneath and it'll pull it nice and tight and it'll be, it'll be left with no little lip sticking up. We don't want no Miss Lippies sticking up up here. <laughs> After doing some consulting with my cousin, who's actually a very, very good finished carpenter, I was on the fence of whether I wanted to like glue and actually nail from up underneath the crown uh, because it does have that little lip so I can nail up and into it. Or am I going to clamp it, pilot screw, and throw a screw into it? I think that what I've kind of decided on is that I'm going to use tight bond two glue and then like a two inch 18 gauge nail um, I'll clamp it and nail it and then once that glue sets I think we'll be like good to go first one set now I'm moving on to my second one and my clamps that I have are not very deep so the crown is too tall to fit into there and establish a nice tight clamp so I need to kind of like give some blocking up on the back side of that so this was my idea just some blocking like that that can sit there so that when my clamp goes up and over top there's enough meat there to actually clamp this thing down um, these can stay on there because you're not going to see it from the front side um, but you can always just reach up and just take them out as well all Right, everybody, I am done. And it looks pretty good. I'm not the greatest. Like I said, this is like my third time doing it, but it looks pretty darn good. So now I don't know if you could tell, but like that miter right there isn't perfect. Um, that one's okay. That one, I just caulked it. Which brings me to the much asked about because I've mentioned it a hundred times and never showed you guys caulking tips from Cluggy. All right, so if you're anything like me, you've screwed up too many times over the years. So that is how I've become pretty good at caulking and I've, I've taken these tips from a lot of different people, uh, either real life or YouTube. Um, Finish Carpentry TV is a YouTube channel that's really good. The guys like Unbelievable. He's an all-star. He's awesome. He gave a lot of the caulking tips that I'm going to kind of like give in this. So I don't know which video. I'll, I'll search it out. If I can find it, it'll be like bloop, somewhere like right here. Um, 
but I'll take you up close and personal with one that I've already done. And that one had a little bit of gapping to it and you can't tell. I mean, it looks like a tight miter from down here. So let's just jump right into it. I'll move on to this one right here. You can probably see it from there, but it, that's not a real great miter. That's, it's op open at the bottom a little bit um, and then it gets tighter at the top. So that's not, a, that's not a real good miter. I'm not real happy. That's the worst one out of this whole lot. So I figure I'll, show, I'll start on, on the worst one. Basically, all you're gonna need is a little cup of water Bodie is barking at somebody. A little cup of water, um, like either a rag or I just use a bundle of paper towels. Um, and then I also like to have a um, small putty knife. So one about that size. Um, now I have two different ones. So this one's super stiff. I don't like them when they're like, you, they're not bendable when you press up against the wall. So I have this one that's pretty bendable. When you press it, it, it will bend along with it. So like when I'm doing baseboard and I'm caulking along the top where the uh, wall is, I like to use the, the bendy one. I just find it pulls a better line. Oh, and also the caulk that I'm using is, uh, it's actually crown and like molding caulk. This is, it's Alex Flex. Um, I guess they say it like doesn't shrink and I don't know, I've, I've, I've had issues with it shrinking. I know it doesn't say it. It says it doesn't shrink, but it does. The hole at the top, that's another thing. I know I've mentioned it in the past. Don't cut a massive hole because it's gonna squirt too much caulk out. You really don't want a lot. You want just a nice, like, very little bit, enough to wet your finger and work it into that, that open miter. All right, so that's as little as I'm squirting in there, and even that is a lot. So it's just a thin, thin bead. So the trick really honestly is to just keep, every time you go to make a pull, re-wet your finger. Make a pull, wipe your finger off, re-wet it, make a pull, wipe it off, re-wet it. Don't be afraid to like really get your finger wet when you pull that line because the moisture is what's gonna allow a nice smooth pull and um, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna wanna like, everything that's outside of that miter is going to kind of like melt down. It's going to become real liquidy. So it's easy to kind of wipe off. It's not going to be real thick. All right. So now wipe my thinner. Rewet it. And then we're just back in and you're just working it into that miter every time. But you see how it's, it's like liquidy on my finger. It's not coming off in big clumps that it, I, I promise you every pull it'll just get better looking and better looking right here is basically done and that looks really really good from here and the reason why I say to use this even on something that's m mainly rounded like this crown is because in this corner that's a sharp angle it's pretty tough to use your finger to get in there it'll always be a little rounded in there with caulk so use this to kind of get in there and make and maintain that sharp decorative. But I'm done with this with this miter fix. And I promise you guys from from down here, I don't know if it's showing how clean it is. That's that looks really tight. And that's how I do it. I mean that's how I caulk all of my window trim. Um, all my baseboard. I do the same thing. Do not be afraid, like I said, to really continuously be able to keep your finger wet while you're doing it that is the major major difference uh, between a clean job and a messy job um, if you caulk and you pull your finger and it builds up around your finger on the outside and leaves like big valleys on the outside of your finger you there's too much you use too much caulk you really don't need that much um, just a little bit and it's it's enough to fill that space so i'm going to continue and then we'll call lauren down here and see if we can fool her Tell her I cut perfect miters the whole time. All right, wait, don't, get don't go, don't <laughs> go anywhere because me and the people, um, want you to know that I did perfect miters the entire time. Did you? Per I mean, can't you tell? Look. As opposed to imperfect miters? Well, yeah, imperfect miters. I yeah. mean, it looks great. You can't tell that I caulked anything. Like in those seams? In, yeah, in, in the mite, in so, like that miter right there. Yeah. 
like at the bottom it was a little bit wide. No, it looks good. Right? I could see it against the wall, but that's Well, it. yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. the wall. I mean, that I've, is what it is. I've never had crown molding, like in my life. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever had it on kitchen either. Well, I think my parents knew kitchen. I think might have had it. My parents did not. Good morning, friends. Another day, more kitchen renovations. Kyle is, what are you doing? You've got a new toy. I'm rectifying mistakes. Mm -hmm. So when I did this backsplash, um, I didn't leave enough room in some of the receptacles to get the screw in there, um, to get the faceplate on. So if anybody out there makes that mistake as well, um, Milwaukee tile bits, I actually, Lauren sent Lauren over to Home Depot to pick these up. How much these run you about? Like 14 bucks or something. These are blowing through these tiles. And some of these holes, if you guys look, they're really close to the edge. It actually was worked so well that it didn't break that corner, which I was, a little bit nervous that it would because maybe it would show a little bit um but that cut that hole really well so if you need to drill tile this is made for like tile and glass i've never used like a tile drill bit before but these worked really well i mean really well so i just started with a small the smallest bit uh one eighth and then went up to quarter inch and they cut really nice holes so we're going to be doing that so you can put the face plates on we're going to do the kick plates and then to find the screws now. a few other odds and ends around this kitchen. Get it finished. Yes. All right. Done. Crazy what face plates will do Dude, to face around. Plates. And look, jacket. Now we're not like making sure none of them are touching. Yes, it was we're... very unsafe. It was very, it was so unsafe. I <laughs> mean, so unsafe. Let, in my moment of truth, let me go flip the breakers back on. What do we think? Do the lights work? Yep. Well, the lights ain't on down here. Oh, they're back. They're upside down. Hold on. Okay, no, they're good. I was going to say, I never, I never flipped them. Nope, they good, they good. Good job, baby. It's looking good. Now what? Kick plates? It's crazy how these little things <laughs> just clean the place up like not hanging switches and receptacles. <laughs> so we're jumping back in and kick plates are another must. Um, the way that I had cut this floor, I was accounting for a three quarter inch uh, kick plate. Uh, these cabinets came essentially with like skins, which are like super thin. I think they're only like an eighth inch thin. Um, so I'm going to use um, essentially the spacers that come with the fridge and I'm going to rip them down to size and use them. Um, and I'll just do a little like reveal on the, on the end. So it shows a finished end, but there's not too much to be honest. So this should go by pretty quick. <laughs> Since this is a portion of the kick plate, so like one of the one of the only two spots that you're gonna actually see the end of the cabinet, um, I'm putting a reveal on it. And basically all that means is my kick plate's gonna be coming out. It's at a 45 degree angle. And then, because the side of this is unfinished, you got the finished white and then you got unfinished. So you wanna see finished on the end. So then you just cut a little 45 piece I don't know if it's gonna focus, but a 45 piece that's gonna show a uh, finished side. So when we put this on, it's essentially gonna look like finished and finished and you're not gonna see it. And I'll just use a pin nailer and just tack that in. Now this is what it looks like from the front now. You can't see any of that gapping along the floor. I'll throw some shoe mold down over here and uh, that'll finish that off real nice. What's cool about this glue, now this is the glue you saw me use yesterday with that crown, uh, the lock, or the tight bond too. This stuff is actually, not to say, it's not like we're eating off the crown molding, but uh, this is safe for food grade stuff too. So like if you're making like, like butcher block where you're pressing together a bunch of pieces. Or if you happen to keep a lot of coffee mugs in your car and you happen to chip one and you don't want your wife to know. 
She used wood glue to put it back together. <laughs> I love this little guy. Yeah, he's awesome. I keep uh, saying I'm a Milwaukee guy, but then I keep buying Milwaukee, so. And I've, I've actually been very happy with the Milwaukee purchases. Hey, some of them just can't be tied down to one, you know? That's right. We've been doing this thing where like at night we love to like just hang out and like on the couch instead of throwing that, like the TV on or like jumping on our phones or something, like playing some sort of game. Like last night we were chilling with dominoes. It was really nice. So we're gonna start trying to, Bodie, trying to do that. Get out, go bud. Um, we're gonna start trying to do that. So if you guys have any like good games, like two, two person games or something like that, let us know because we're on the lookout. I think we're gonna get what? Sellers of Catan. And Ticket to Ride. And Ticket to Ride we heard were really good. We've done a bunch of puzzles. Yeah, jigsaws, those were fun. You guys saw in our last video that we submitted Bodhi's like DNA test. We haven't gone back yet, but what we do know about him is he's very high energy and he requires lots of not only physical exercise, but like mental stimulation. So I do play a lot of games with him. Um, but a game that I play with him when I don't have a lot of time is um, of like box foraging. So basically I just take a bunch of random stuff out of our recycling and I stuff food and I hide it and it's like a food puzzle for him and he loves it. Um, so if you have a dog and you just can't pay a lot of attention to him that day, this is really good. I just close it up and I give it to the pup. You go to your bed. Bed. As you can see, already got into some plastic. Okay. Get it, buddy. So that will last him like honestly only five minutes, but I'll kind of just keep refilling it, keep refilling it, keep refilling it. Um, and then obviously I'll lessen the amount of food we give him for the next meal because we're giving him so many treats. But I don't know what the exact stat is, but like 20 minutes of mental stimulation is equivalent to some sort of physical exercise in terms of like energy use. So it has really helped with our very energetic dog. Got the treats in the egg carton. Is he good? And then I think he still has, oh no, he's got a few more in the box, I see one. Good job, baby. Done. Kick plates are done. Got the ugliness covered, got these covered. Tomorrow is a new day. It's funny because I feel like you don't realize how sh yeah. crappy something looks yeah. until you fix it and you're like, oh wow, that did not look good Yeah, you're before. so right. I mean, you're so right. Yeah, it looks like a completely different kitchen. For a guy who's got COVID, he's been pretty productive. Done. He got a lot done. It's looking so good. Like we have said for the last like month or two, we got the house functional and then we kind of just left it alone. So it's been nice to like pick away at these little tasks. Especially because next door, like we've, we've hit some roadblocks with inspections and failures for really silly things. So it's nice to like get a, a like a win, you yeah. know, and just like finish some of these small projects that have just been like looming over us. Yes. Guys, that's going to do it for us this week. Like, subscribe, comment below. No, I need you to be a little bit more energetic on that one. All right, let's try this again. Guys, that's gonna do it for us this week. You know the drill, like, subscribe, comment below, and we'll see you in the next one. Later.